Okay, so two days to go <laughs> to finish your course. Today and tomorrow. Today and tomorrow. Yeah. Thank you, Professor Jaswan Patak. We are here today to listen, to attend your talk, to your lecture on nano base value care solution for oncology practices. And so please uh, go ahead. Welcome, very welcome. You're very welcome. Muchas gracias. Keep my word. <laughs> We are recording. Yeah. Muchas gracias, Professor Caesar, and uh, it's my last but one talk, and probably tomorrow is my last talk, and that will cover complete the workshop which uh, Professor Caesar had planned to utilize my presence in. Colombia, Bogota, the Fulbright specialist. So I am extremely thankful to all of you. So I will start my talk. I am going to talk about nano based value care solution for oncology practices with focus on herbal and nutraceuticals. All the figures are taken from various web sources just to explain the ideas and concept not to be used for sale or any other purpose except teaching. So, Amo Colombia, e la gente de aqui, mean umre yashpan patak, actualmente estoy en USA, soy profesor y decano asociado en la Universidad del Sur de Florida, Taneja College of Pharmacy, estoy en Colombia como becario Fulbright Specialista, uh, sincere thanks to Universidad Distrital Francisco Jose de Caldas for hosting me as a Fulbright Specialist here at Bogota. My sincere thanks to Rector and Dean and other administrative heads supporting my trip here. My sincere thanks to Fulbright Specialist Commission of Colombia for supporting my trip to Bogota, Colombia. I will fail if I do not mention my sincere gratitude to Professor Cesar Aurelio Herano, Hereino Fierro. I hope I correctly said. Reino. Reino. Huh? Reino. Reino. <laughs> <laughs> so, Professor Cesar. 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 Professor Cesar Aurelio Reino Fierro. Perfect. Gracias. <laughs> Being my host and incredible support for making my stay happy here. Special thanks to Reem Abdullo Hume and Shannon Fleming of World Learning. Sergio Villamil Sanchez, Sebastian Villamidar, and many others from Colombian Fulbright Commission for their kind support. And Professor Luis H. Reyes, Juan C. Cruz, Willy Moreno, Luis Fernando Cruz Quiroga, and special thanks to Professor Alexis Ortiz from International Office. Yesterday I had an opportunity to meet him and go to your main office. A very beautiful facility there. I was very impressed with the museum, yeah. very nice museum uh, about the whole space. And then Alvaro Vasquez who encouraged to apply me to apply this Fulbright Fellowship and that's why I'm here. Encouragement of all these people supported my, and the outcome is I am here. Third day, El Fondo de Mi Corazón. Uh, if you understand my Spanish, then you will surely understand my English also. So the, I bring the greeting from USF Tampa, Florida. These are beautiful, our students, Marshall Student Center. This is the entry of USF. It's a very beautiful campus and lushy green, all green. It's like Mori Flores. Mira Flores. Ah, Mira Flores. <laughs> and this is our new building for the downtown. Very beautiful building and a lot of facility for students. It's more student friendly than the faculty friendly. And this is downtown here, another aspect, and these are beautiful beaches, Clearwater Beach, and we have nice beaches along, and this is the bay, 10 miles long bay, and this is the pirate ship there. So, uh, we are going to talk about um, nano-based value care solutions 
for oncology practices with focus on herbal and nutraceuticals and we have three portions here one is value based oncology care value based oncology care is the money amount of money which is needed that is called value and then value based care is how much we are spending the money and how we can reduce the spending on cancer treatment that is we would like to discuss then how the nanomedicine in cancer treatment is changing recent developments and future trends and finally herbal and nutraceutical for value based oncology care how the herbal and nutraceuticals are helping to reduce down the cost of uh, expenses for cancer care so value based oncology care is a terminology which is used so oncology practices are facing new challenges in the evolving healthcare landscape including transition to value based care policy and reimbursement changes and increasing financial pressures so in america what is happening is normal insurance will cover to certain extent and then you have to take additional insurance for cancer because the expenses are very high and that is where now people are understanding that if you do that then there will be very high cost for cancer treatment so there will be a lot of people who will not afford that and that is where the low income group and high income group are facing challenges so people are dying from low income group than the high income group and that is where they have come up with call they call it oncology care model and oncology practices are challenged to manage cost while continuing to deliver high quality care and practices participating in oncology care model or preparing for oncology care first ocf models are seeking new solution they are trying to find out what are the solution reduce the cost of the and that is the key for this thing so understanding the cancer in simple words is the cancer is a broad term used to describe many different diseases in general and cancer happens when abnormal cells in your body grow out of control and crowd out normal cells and then they don't allow the normal cells to grow and that's where the movement the nerves and your blood vessels and everything gets affected and then you see blockage because of the tumor which is forming and it is it can start anywhere almost anywhere and cancer can stay in one spot or it can metastasize any, any everywhere so there are people who have been having cancer of gastrointestinal tract and then suddenly it get into lungs and liver and lateral death so it can go in any part of the body because the cancer cells are always present in everybody's body even for you me and all of us we have cancer cells in our body the only thing is our immunity is strong so the cancer cells don't grow but as soon as there there are uh, cells they are called as t cells and these t cells in our body are the fighting force if the t cell concentration goes down then the cancer cells grow and that's where you build up your immunity by good lifestyle good exercises good food good microbiota so all these factors help you to prevent from suffering from cancer if suppose your immunity goes down then you can see that cancer is happening and i had a friend a very close friend of mine who got initially he, he was very healthy till the age 60 and suddenly suffered from chikungunya the viral infection and then it started showing the immunity gone down and immunity gone down so that person started getting vitiligo white spots frozen shoulders and gradually got glaucoma and then ultimately got cancer because this virus infections were reducing the immunity and that is where this is happening so most cancers are named after where it is happening like breast cancer begins in the breast tissue and then spreads around it can go anywhere and many cancer for solid tumors which are growth of tissue and blood cancer such as leukemia lymphoma all these things are with the systems and they stay in the form of individual cells and they keep on circulating in your body as soon as they get an environment to grow then they start growing and once they start growing then they start affecting the normal cells and eating the normal cells so there is a tumors can be either malignant cancerous or benign non cancerous so you get tumors many a time but it is benign so you don't have to worry about it because it is not spreading it remains there but if it is metastasized then it will start growing and within no time you know the body gets full of so your function stop working 
and that is the uh, problem with the system there. So if you look at the causes of cancer, why it is have generic changes are one is hereditary. So good number of nowadays they are learning about the genes and they are finding that cancer is a hereditary disease. So if the mother has breast cancer, the daughter will have it in the normal cases unless she takes care of that. Then if you are getting exposed to a lot of UV radiation like you go to beach and minimum clothes you wear and get exposed to UV radiation, then in due course of time you get skin cancer and then that skin cancer can also spread around. Then you have chemical, fertilizers and insecticides, carcinogenic chemical, lot of things, food, used to use some carcinogenic chemicals, we never thought about it and then some people got cancer, so now they are worried about carcinogenic chemicals because they don't know and they only find out later. Then as I mentioned viruses, you know like COVID virus also in long run we will find out that those who suffer from COVID may have cancer because it changes immunity. And COVID happens, because people died because of reducing immunity in COVID. And that's why various viruses, now viruses are everywhere. So you are continuously exposed to viruses. So if you want to be healthy for a long time, best way is lifestyle. Healthy lifestyle helps you. And then smoking is another reason, mostly lung cancer is very common in smoking. Tobacco, if you use tobacco, chew tobacco, then a lot of oral cancers happen. And then finally the cell division, if your body gets, all our body carries cancer cells. Now cancer cells in, indirectly affect the normal cells and they start mutating. So the mutation of the normal cells gradually builds up the concentration of cancer cells. Now it will take time. So as you grow older and older, the chances of getting cancer are bigger and bigger, more and more. And that's what we'll see in our system. So rising cost of oncology, you can see in 2015, it was 182 billion. Now by 2030, it will be 245 billion, almost close to 60, means 60, 70% increase in the cost. And this is the cancer cost in happening in United States and similar things are numbers can you can see. So there are different types of cancers, localized cancer, regional cancers and the cost of tra is, uh, treating the cancer is different. But now there is another possibility which is happening is that even though if you identify your cancer in the early phase, you can survive for a long time. That is where yesterday I was talking to the student that if you are 30, 35, 40, then if you start doing your mammograms, then you can identify your breast cancer at a very early stage. Once you do that, then you will be able to survive for a long time. If in America they say that after 50, every 5 years you do colonoscopy. Once you do colonoscopy, then you will know that you are not suffering from colorectal cancer. If you have if you do angiography every 10 years, then you will know that your blockades are not there, so you can live longer. So preventive diagnosis is becoming a key in the cancer treatment. Monthly drug cost is almost $100,000 and it is very struggle to survive and then it is very pressure on the family for the cost. And cancer survival, as you know, in early days, the cancer survival now is becoming more and more and people are surviving. So 63 of the cancer patients and loved ones reported financial struggles following the cancer diagnosis. This was the challenge in America. Now you will find that if you have a high income, if you are belonging to the high income group, then you are aware of your breast. So you do mammograms from 40 onwards. So every year, every alternate year, if you do mammograms, you will avoid breast cancer or you will get it in the first place. Then attend the screening mostly present early seek second opinion for doctors, access to private healthcare, access to targeted therapy and that's why those who have good income, high income, their survival rate is 90%. Those who have low income, their survival rate is 65%. So because they cannot afford many a time. So low income families and Americans who are in uninsured or underinsured, blue collar workers who face medical bills more than four times their annual salary cannot afford the rising cost of cancer treatment. 
so many a times your salary is three thousand six hundred dollars, but your expenses are thirteen thousand dollars, and that is where the challenge comes into the picture. So cancer is uh, I had a thing about Indonesia, but in Indonesia also the cancer is growing significantly with high number. In Colombia also it is growing on. This looks like the old one. I had the new one which is data on Colombia also. So now income disparity and cancer it is showing you know you have these red dots are where low income groups are there and they are suffering higher cancer uh, death rates and this is where the challenge is coming and geographic distribution of cancer in America. Now you can see US cancer epidemic at a glance 1 million 806 thousand people suffer from cancer every year. They identify 1 million so out of 350 million and then 606 thousand people die every year in 2020 they died so 40 percent 40.1 percent probability men in us will face, face an invasive cancer diagnosis in their lifetime so almost 40 percent people will face diagnosis for cancer and they will have some sort of cancer most of the aged people geriatric population <laughs> suffer from prostate cancer and prostate cancer is you can live with prostate cancer for 20 mm -hmm. 25 years without you know problems but if you do operation i have a good number of friends who died after the operation and that prostate cancer can really if it metastasis then it can spread and then you have your challenges there so that is another interesting thing there so now you will find that 60 percent of the cancer patients are 65 and older as you grow older the mutated cells grow and then they form the tumors and that is why it is the second leading cause of death in US behind the heart disease. Heart attack is the major cause of deaths in mm -hmm. United States and second one is mm -hmm. and then 150 billion dollars were spent just for cancer care in 2018 and it is growing expenses for the system. So you have post-operative surgery is another lot of expenses are there because once you have operation then you have a lot of follow-up and that becomes too much because if suppose you have a cancer you get surgery then you have to follow up every three months go to the doctor get mm -hmm. the MRI and all the things so that becomes very expensive follow-up for the post-surgery expenses. So these are cost of prevalent and patient cancer so for lung cancer it is $282,000 major thalamia is $150,000 breast cancer $101,000 so now you can imagine the average salary of Americans is around $40,000 so it goes five times their annual salary mm -hmm. how they will be able to uh, manage that it is not very difficult to know and that is where the challenges are coming so you will find that in 1960 the average age of American was 70 years in 2018 now the average age is 81 years so cancer number of cancer patients is growing because people are living longer mm -hmm. and that's why they are showing that if there are population with 80 plus years then almost 2500 people from hundred thousand dollars suffer from cancer if it is 60 to 79 then less than 2000 people if it is 40 to 59 then almost 500 uh, less than 500 a 20 to 39 even lesser than 100 and 0 to 19 is like almost nil so young people don't suffer because the mutation doesn't happen mutation happens over the period of time in the normal cells and that's how the cancer cells are formed so this is uh, and this is another thing female smoking prevalent percentage male smoking prevalent percentage so you'll find that males smoke more than the female and that's why they have more cancer lung cancer than the female patient but subsequently as you as the year going by people are now even women are smoking equal to men and that is why you will find that there is a overlapping of the uh, curve and then male and female both who are smoking are suffering from cancer there now the value of cancer we have seen this slide in the earlier and it is growing like anything and that is where the challenge comes into the picture now average monthly income pre-tax is 3600 and government takes the tax minimum 10 percent so it is almost 3300 per monthly so 36,000 so 40,000 that's what I was saying and now average monthly cost 
your monthly income is 3600 monthly cost for chemotherapy is 1000 to 12000 radiation is 9000 dollars and immunotherapy is 10000 to 20000 this is monthly cost your income is 3600 your costs are so high that it is 63% of the cancer patients and loved ones reported financial struggles following the cancer diagnosis 63% so you can imagine a big pressure on the and this is where the value of cost treatment is growing up so now what people are trying to do is to find out the solutions for that so nano medicine is becoming one of the very good solution for uh, cancer lowering the cancer co cost and then alternative treatment post surgery and pre surgery is another area that we will talk with the herbal and nutraceutical so the second portion is talking about the nano medicine how the nano medicine is developing so we have disease driven design so based nowadays we are learning more and more about cancer you know it was in early days the cancer was one thing which is dreaded disease now we are learning more and more about cancer is it what is the reason of it what are the genes required what causing that and how metastasis how it metastasis and it is you know you don't die immediately with cancer it takes six months eight months one year so you have time to learn about your own cancer that is where we talked about precision medicine that's where we are now learning the thing so you try to understand the target population and selection criteria what kind of tumors are there what kind of treatment can be given so you study that so what will enable earlier stop decision so if you can continuously do the mammograms every alternate year or every six months you will be able to avoid that if you do the prostate testing you know normal in, in normally in american system for annual checking they always test prostate whether the cancer is there or not and it is very easy nowadays <clears throat> you don't have to do the anus testing nowadays there is a biomarker which tells you that you are suffering from cancer or not prostate cancer so i have that biomarker which is very low mm -hmm. so it is like in 0.001% so my doctor said that at least for coming 10 years you will not get prostate cancer that's mm -hmm. what you know so based on biomarkers now it is easy to identify people who do not who will get cancer or who will not get cancer and this is where it is very easy and once you do this test these are not expensive tests but that gives you a peace mm -hmm. that now you have a and then you are exploring different types of delivery system for typical specific tumor pathology diversity and clinical disease relevance in vivo model understanding therapeutic margin and dosing schedule so these are some of the new developments which are happening for cancer treatment so cancer treatment from general cancer treatment now going to personalized cancer treatment for individual person and that is why you can treat the person very specifically now you know this tried when i show it people don't like it because i quote mark twain he said there are lies, there are damn lies and finally there is statistics. So scientists use the statistics. Sometimes I make a joke that if you start using statistics, you stop the science. <laughs> because you are trying to play with the numbers. Statistics is playing with the numbers. But it does give some idea. So you mean your statistics are fact, but my facts are just statistics. So it is very interesting document. So people don't like this side, but I show it in the big conferences also. <laughs> But we'll see the statistics for cancer. So you'll find that estimated new cancer cases in 2017. So prostate cancer, 19% people suffer from prostate cancer. Out of that 1.8 million people. You can imagine how many 100,000 people suffer. Lung cancer and bronchial cancer is 14%. Colon and rectum is 9%. Urinary bladder is 7%. So skin, melanoma of skin is 6%. Now melanoma of skin can be avoided, avoidable cancer. But you have to use sunscreen, but then now the problem is sunscreens are destroying the seas. Because the components in sunscreens are destroying all the uh, sea beauty. And that is where the problem. So in Hawaii, they don't allow you to use sunscreen. So now people are bathing, they may use swimming costume, but on above they use full sleeves clothes <laughs> like pajama <laughs> because otherwise you cannot use sunscreen this is the problem and you cause and especially if you have white people their skin is very sensitive yeah. they burn very quickly yeah. and that is where because like i am a brown person so i carry more melanin than white people so it is 
challenging for them. The black people even better because their skin is much higher in melanin. So they don't get much skin cancer. So there are kidney, renal, pelvis, non hygienic lymphoma, leukemia. So all these are different types of, uh, but you will find that the difference is in the female it is breast cancer, it is 30%. So it is very high percentage of breast cancer, 12% lung. Uh, in human beings, uh, men it is 14%, colon cancer is 8%. Earlier people used to see that women will have less colon cancer, but nowadays it is becoming very common because they don't eat fibers and all those things. So lifestyle almost same. And then uterine corpus is another area. So they have also, so this is the number of cancer for uh, average. And then estimated new cases of leukemia, lymphoma and myeloma. In 2017, 30,000 cases of myeloma, leukemia, 62,000 cases, lymphoma, 80,000 cases. So this is like 172. These are all blood-related cancers. So they remain in your blood and the circulation. So this is how your normal blood looks like and this is how your leukemia blood looks like. And these blue things, they are all uh, different types of lymphocytes and myocytes, you know, they all create problems in the body. And as the blue will start growing, then you start showing the side effects, growth of, and then your breathing will be difficult, you'll have low hemoglobin and then it lead to death. So there are all neck and throat and lymphatic system, these are all new people are learning more and more about cancer because lymphatic system cancer was not there earlier. Nowadays they are knowing that oh this is the cause of death. They thought it is because of different reasons but then they found out that no there were cancerous tissues in the lymph system. And that is what they are uh, trying to find out how we can do that. So five year relative survival rates you can see that uh, they change you know with the advance of the sciences in 1960, 63 uh, the survival rates were uh, there but gradually you will find that the numbers are growing up in different uh, systems. So in 2006 and 2012 you will find that people with leukemia died much more, Surv survival rates are higher. So even though you have a leukemia you live longer. Uh, so this is the advantage of uh, new technology which is are there. So what is the recent development in nanomedicine and cancer treatment? That is what we would like to look at how the nanomedicine is helping now and how the, it is reducing the cost of it. So first thing is that you find out the target where you want to go. Then do a lot of animal experiments, clinical trials, early detection, diagnosis, treatment and then technology in vitro, in vivo studies and drug delivery. So this is some of the pattern what are new things are doing. So second thing is that what we are now doing is people are using nanomedicines for treatment of cancer. So now you are eliminating radiation, you are eliminating chemotherapy. So the cost has been reduced significantly because you, as soon as you use radiation, there are a lot of side effects for the radiation. So you have to use a lot of drugs to mm -hmm. make sure that the body is maintained. If you use chemotherapy, again you are using poisonous material for chemotherapy and that destroys all your body. So people are now trying to avoid radiation and chemotherapy. That was the traditional uh, system. But now they try to lower it, don't want to use it. So, but in many countries still they use it, chemotherapy and radiation. But new medicine, nanomedicines are comparatively cheaper than all these two. That's why the cancer cost can be reduced with the nanomedicine and that is uh, why a lot of people are putting a lot of money, a lot of companies are putting a lot of money into seeing that the money and even government supplies, government puts a lot of money into it. So we have liposomes, so we have doxorubicin which is approved, myoset, TM, Teva, UK metastatic breast cancer approved drug. So this is treatment and they are doing it and it is working very well. Thermodox, Celsion, so it is a primary hepatocellular carcinoma, refractory chest wall, breast cancer, colorectal, liver metastasis. So this is in phase 3, now it must have been approved. So you will see that there are capso, capso, Kaposi sarcoma, ovarian cancer, multiple myeloma, this is approved drug. So liposomes is a nanoparticle, nano medicine, which uses different types of drugs. So we have vincristine, uh, you have put vincristine in liposomes and now it is a FDA approved drug. 
so it is available in hospitals i think it must be available in colombia also because uh, bigger hospitals must be using it it's not very expensive it's like thousand dollars or two thousand dollars per injection which is much cheaper than the radiation and chemotherapy then donorubicin and donoxone uh, this is hiv related kaposi sarcoma it is approved then cytorabin is uh, lymphomatous meningitis it is approved then irinotecan is another drug which is metastatic pancreatic cancer approved so now you have medicine for pancreatic cancer earlier it was not there so this is now the people with uh, uh, pancreatic cancer also live longer now they are using very different thing like cisplatin oxyplatin oxyliplatin paclitaxel sn38 irinotecan these are some of the drug which are used in different types of uh, cancers and they are now in phase 3 phase 2 all so they they must have now been approved there because this is little bit old data with me uh, then there is a polymeric conjugate we use it which is asparaginase paclitaxel irinotecan uh, compathosin diamino cyclohexane platinum docetaxel so these are the drugs which are used and they use different types of polymeric conjugates and then there are some of them are approved some of them are in different phase trials and it, they are used for renal cell carcinoma gastric cancer non small cell lung cancer cell lung cancer ovarian cancer advanced cancer and solid tumor so you can see that the nano medicines now are being used for different kinds of um, taxes uh, cancers and different types of uh, polymeric conjugates are used for it then there is a new group called polymeric nanoparticles where polymer they are used for azathrocin azathropin uh, as as it is azathropin something azd281 hydroxyquinazolone pyrazole anilide aurora b kinase inhibitor and it is used for advanced solid tumor this is in phase 1 so probably it will go in phase 3 and then you will be able to available then polymeric micelles paclitaxel is there these are all injectable they go into your blood circulation and they are used for all different types of cancers and you will find that a good number of companies are working on it then there is a dsch plate platin which is nano platin nano carrier pancreatic cancer head and neck cancer small cell lung cancer and bladder cancer so these are all very useful so they are really reducing the cost of it the nano medicine is helping in reducing the cost of Uh, now we have more future trends in the nano medicine and some of them are to understand that there was a traditional approach to treat the cancer so traditional main line approaches to treating cancer has been chemotherapy radiation therapy and surgery and these are sometimes characterized as poison that is chemotherapy burn that is uh, radiation and slush that is surgery because they use very poisonous materials if a normal person get the chemotherapy you are dead because it is so poisonous you know so both chemotherapy and radiation therapy have from the onset been focused for killing cancer cells and one case by using high toxic chemicals and in other case using focused radiation so this was the thought process for many years almost 20 30 years we were using chemotherapy and radiation that is burn and poison but sometimes these approaches have worked and have saved lives in many instances however they have not worked and worked badly and that has led to cancer relapses so in many cases what they found was that if you treat the patient with chemotherapy and radiation after 5 year the cancer comes back so again he has to go so you are with this you reduce the life span of the human being rather than letting him live for longer you kill them in five year otherwise they will die in two years so that is where the challenge is coming and many people many many people say i don't want chemotherapy i don't want radiation i will die normal with cancer because it is so difficult because when they see the side effects and all those things they do I, i had a friend uh, who was also associated with our organization he was president he when he came to know that he is suffering from pancreatic cancer he told flatly i don't want to take any medicine whatever Three four months he got, he lived happily and died one day. You know, so but you need good strong mind yeah. to do that because death is inevitable. You have everybody is going to die, but whether you want to live longer with all chemotherapy and radiation or you want to die in three months, the option is yours, and that's where 
But in America, this option is not given unless you write it in your will. Otherwise, they will treat you till you die. Yeah. <laughs> it's very interesting. So in America, living will is very important. So now people have started changing the approach. So initially, everybody start that will kill the cancer cell. Will kill cancer cell by different technology. Mm -hmm. Now they started understanding what exactly is biology. Why? Why the cancer happens in certain people and why it doesn't happen in certain people. So they try to understand the systems biology. System biology is to understand the root cause. What is the system which is taking place in the biological system? Why it is happening? And system biology approach is what you do is you get lot of data from thousands of patients. Compute the data and try to understand why this is happening based on lot of data. So you the bioinformatics and genomics has given us new tools to understand the system biology and from systems uh, computation we use lot of new software to understand the analyze the data and then from there we get more and more information about the biology of human being. We are learning every day we learn a lot and then you get new insights from the biology. Uh, so you are using computation go to the new hypothesis, get new insight. From there you come to the new biological question, use new technologies and come back to the new data. So now this is a cycle. So you, you suppose you use nanomedicine in 100 patients. Now you create a data. Now based on that nanomedicine data, you try to understand what is the new hypothesis, why it worked, why nanomedicine in work. Suppose out of 100 patient, 80 patient gave very positive result, 20 did not give. So now you start understanding what is the difference of that 20 patients which did not give positive result. And what was the thing which gave positive result in 80 patient. So that is now new insight in understanding the biology. And that is called system biology approach. And system biology approach understanding disease is founded on the simple profound belief that diseases are systemic disorder that emerge from the dysfunction of one or more networks that subsequently change the levels of the molecules controlled by these disease perturbed networks. And the cause of these network dysfunctions can be genetic or environmental or disease progress. Dynamics is different and people try to understand the biological mechanism. What is the receptor? What is it causing and why it is not helping? This is where you are learning more and more about the disease. As the changes caused by the disease perturb the networks percolate throughout the system, they inevitably lead to the systemic dysfunction of the multiple organs. And this is where system biology approach is working very well. So now we have to understand that how the system biology approach is there. I have a very beautiful presentation actually on this to understand system biology. So you have organ networks. So you have lung, you have liver, you have heart. So these are big things. They are main organs. So they are all related with each other. So you and your brain monitors them. The organ networks here. But at the organ network you go further down we learn that there is a cellular network. So there are cells, different types of epithelial cell, all different types of lymphatic cells, there are different types of cells within the body. Now these cells also work in hand in hand with each other. So you have to understand that how the things are working, network. So you, you are understanding in system biology is at different level. One is at organ level, second is at cellular level, third is at molecular level where you have different kinds of DNAs, RNAs, mRNA, all those things are there. And then you come down to the gene level where you are exactly understanding what is the genetic structure of the system. And now what is happening is people when they are did this approach, system biology approach, they now started, so initially what people used to do that if you have a lung cancer, then they will treat the lung cancer by killing the cells, cancer cells. Now people started understanding what must be the cellular mechanism behind that. Then from cellular mechanism, they came to molecular mechanism, molecular mechanism, they came to genetic mechanism. And now we are understanding and I think another 10 years, you might go further down <laughs> to understand more because Today we are well versed with nanotechnology, we know a lot about it. But there must be something in the body which is even smaller than nanotechnology, nanoparticle, mm -hmm. which may cause this. And that's why system biology approach will definitely be 
enriching our knowledge about so from genes how the genes modify the molecular network how the molecular networks modify the cellular network and how the cancer cells grow now we are trying to understand what genes are responsible for the growth of cancer cells and once you understand what genes are responsible then you can treat the cancer in a different way that is what immunotherapy precision medicine is coming up and personalized medicine so this is the individual with major organic thing but all these networks cellular organ molecular genetics they are like social networks and they are related with each and this is where you are understanding that there are signaling pathways so genes will signal to the molecular level molecular pathways will signal to the cellular level cellular pathways signal to the organ level <laughs> and people are understanding different types of pathway you know this is a complicated picture but there are several different types of pathways which is in the body which come down to your dna and rna you know the gene levels and this is where the um, things are happening so there are several signaling pathways that play an essential role in the cellular decision between proliferation differentiation and the death so cells cancer cells proliferate so they grow in number and then they differentiate between cancer cells and normal cells and then they cause the death so the cells cells are continuously dying but the they the cancer cells will grow they will proliferate so they will differentiate proliferate and death but in between their number will grow the more number of cancer cells grow the normal cells will go down and that is where the signaling pathways help us to understand how the proliferation is taking place how the differentiation happens and how the death of the cells happen at the cellular network level and alteration in the signaling pathways and connected gene regulatory networks can change the cellular decisions and thereby trigger the onset of tumor formation so you people are now learning that which gene causes exactly the cancer cell growth that is where at genetic level you understand so gene network is helping to understand the cellular network why cancer cells are growing and even there though there are multiple pathways components studied in detail in many cancer types it remains unresolved how formation information is processed and how cells decide whether to respond or proliferation or differentiation of survival so for example now we understand this time the nobel prize was given to the people who had mrna proliferation and they got the nobel prize for and they had worked it 15 years back they had papers published on mrna proliferation how the mrna in body can proliferate becomes a virus and that's how later it is converted into the virus so we don't know whether it was a scientific thing or it was a intentional thing to experiment so but same thing is now we are understanding about the genes the rna mrna how they are modifying the cellular structure so incidence of cancer is heavily correlated with aging so we are we already saw that that as you age the cancer cells mutated cells grow more and more and more so it takes more time to grow and form the tumors and create problem and that is why as the geriatric population will grow we will see more of the chronic diseases and we have seen it in many of our presentation so now every year the number of cancer patients is growing because of the number of aging population and there is a likelihood of any gene becoming mutated is very low in the early age but it stand to reason that the chance of several different mutations occurring in the same cell is to be very unlikely so the cells do not immediately change mutation happens over the period of time it takes a lot of time and that's why if you die at 40 you will never have cancer but if you die at 80 you definitely will have possibility of cancer and that is how the aging process so for this reason cells in the 70 year old body have had more time to accumulate the changes needed to form cancer cell but those in child are much less likely to have acquired the request requisite genetic change so children you will have less cancer as compared to the older people but children also get cancer because of the genetic structure if their parents had something which is the gene transfer then the children suffer there are good number of children who suffer from the cancer there so here is the challenge of understanding the correlation between patient biology and nanomedicine behavior 
So now what people are doing is they are trying to understand individual patient biology and that's why it is now becoming a personalized medicine. So what they do is they will try to understand that what type of cancer the patients have, what type of genes are involved in it, what type of cellular pathways are used for individual patient. And once they know this and this is nowadays done with the biomarker, there are various biomarkers in cancer which tells you what type of receptors involved, what type of challenges are there and based on the individual patient you can use different types of lipid based carriers, polymer based nano carriers, inorganic nanoparticles or drug conjugates and based on what type of cancer is there you can develop nanomedicine for that particular person or for that particular type of tumor and this is what is uh, understanding the tumor pathology and nanomedicine behavior in tumors will enable us to optimize the tumor accumulation. Now you want, you don't want to give the nanomedicine to all the cells. You want to give it only to the tumor cells and that's how this antibody mediated drug delivery system will help you. And then intramural tumoral distribution, how it happens. Because many people, there was a very good professor, he was Rakesh Jain, he, he was in MIT. So he tried to say that you can kill the tumors by tying the arteries which are going, taking blood into the tumor. There was a lot of research they did it. But it did not succeed. They, they didn't find the solution for that because, you know, even if you tie everything, the new arteries will build it up. Yeah, so it was very fascinating research he had published. Uh, but it did not lead to the final treatment thing uh, until, my, as far as my knowledge is concerned. Uh, transitioning from formulation driven research to disease driven rational development. Now, uh, we are trying to understand every person and cancer is different in every person. That's why it is uh, disease driven rational development and developing and exploiting more clinically relevant animal models to optimize nanomedicine property, dosing schedule, treatment combination. So this is a major area where a lot of people are doing research, only developing animal models to learn more about nanomedicine and pre-selecting patient likely to respond to nanomedicine based therapy. So you are identifying certain patients only who will respond to this therapy. So we in improving the successful clinical translation of nanomedicine, we have to understand the tumor type, specific pathophysiology, then implement the patient-focused design for new nanomedicine, bridge the gap between research and treatment, and employ the patient pre-selection strategy. So this is the strategy they are using it in good number of cancer hospitals. Uh, in Tampa, we have Moffitt Cancer Hospital. So every day, all the cancer specialists, they meet for one hour and they bring the new cancer uh, treatment and it is a very it is very important meeting happens that and they take the advice of different cancer specialists somebody is lung cancer specialist somebody is kidney cancer specialist the case is brought in there in front of them saying that what type of nanomedicine can we use and then based on their experience of treating patients with nanomedicine they decide what type of uh, treatment pattern can be done. It's a very good technique they use regularly and that helps a lot for uh, younger doctors to learn more about oncology. So now we have different approaches they are using for drug delivery to the tumor. One is called passive tumor approach where you just put it in and then it will go to tumor. Here it is not controlled. It is expected it will read the count. The active tumor approach is you put the antibody and then take it to the thing and then combinatorial therapy where you use different types of drugs put it in the combination so that you will address all the receptors involved in the cancer treatment or cancer proliferation and that's where the active uh, process is now becoming the main stream and then the combinatorial so antibody functionalization and visualization this is these are the structures known as antibodies and the monoclonal antibody and in monoclonal antibody this is your nanoparticles now what we do is you attach your antibodies to the nanoparticles once you attach this it, nanoparticles will look like this now this antibody nanoparticles will get into circulation and then they get into your cells now cancer cells because of the antibody present it will go straight to the cancer cells it will not go to the normal cell and that is how you are focusing so now you are not using chemotherapy not using radiation therapy but you are using targeted nano 
drug delivery system with the antibody. So antibody is conjugated to the nanoparticle surface through click chemistry. So you can do this very easily. And then cells that express the complementary antigen are blue and show antibody facilitated binding of targeted nanoparticle. Cells that do not express the complementary antigen are green and no nanoparticle binding. So you will find that in green there is no nanoparticle binding. In blue this nanoparticle get bound. And this is how you study the uh, and this you can see it under the transmission electron microscopy. You can very cytotoxic studies you can see this. And this is how this finally they get into the uh, blue cells inside and then release the drug. So that tumor cells. So fluorescent microscopy images of HUA33 a monoclonal antibody AZ function in nanoparticles with antibody labeled AF647. This is a picture of those antibody overlay images adopted the permission. We use that. Yeah. How does it release the drug? Because these polymers, they start creating channels. And then the channels will release the drug. That's why you use lipophilic and hydrophilic uh -huh. polymers. And once you right. use hydrophilic polymers, the hydrophilic polymers uh, will gradually create the channels and then the channels will release the drug. So it's an interaction, the chemical interaction happening sometimes that the cells in the cells, the polymers will dissolve, hydrophilic polymer. Gradually mm -hmm. they will create the challenge and then because of those small channels, they are all nano level channels. So your drug particles will gradually move, they are molecules, drug is nothing but molecules. So they will get out of the channels and that is how it works. So now the recent trends in cancer therapy is diagnosis. They are saying that you do diagnostic studies as early as possible. When 40, 50 years, start doing for your prostate cancer, start doing for your colorectal cancer, so that you will know at early phase you can identify a mammogram. So these are some so quantum dots and Raman probe can be used for diagnosis. Early detection is possible, in vitro in vivo detection is possible, real time detection is also possible. So this is where they are trying to, without use of nanotechnology and with use of nanotechnology, with nanotechnology you are getting much more benefit using nano diagnostics. So there are now, they call it nano diagnostics and nano therodiagnostics. So while diagnosis you use therapeutic nanoparticles which can also treat. If it is early in the phase, phase 1 cancer, you can use nano diagnostics so that you can have some therapeutic nanoparticle given to the patient and uh, treat the cancer there. Second thing is imaging. So you have now advanced imaging technologies, X-ray, um, CT scan, MRI, PET scan, isotopes can be used, ultrasonography is used. So these are the things which were not used, uh, used without nanotechnology. But now the same thing is advanced with use of nanotechnology. So you can use quantum dots which are which can go in body anywhere and you can really find out the cancer. UCM ultrasonography can be used which uses nanotechnology. Very early detection and new vascularization is possible. Imaging, targeting, delivering and monitoring is possible using nanotechnology. So from diagnosis, diagnostics to therodiagnostics. That is how the transition is happening, that people are coming up with therodiagnosis. So early detection of cancer is cytology, FNSC and biopsy was used. Uh, nowadays, vital optical imaging is possible, hypo, inexpensive mass screening is possible. So it is easy to do that because biopsy will take six, seven days. Here it's immediate uh, information you can get whether it is there or not. And then drug delivery, earlier oral intramuscular, intravenous, intra-arterial drug delivery was possible. Now there is targeted drug delivery possible to deliver small doses and low systemic toxicity, better and faster responses. That is the advantage of nanotechnology and that is why it is reducing the cost also for that. So interesting approaches on uh, system biology for cancer is you are using cancer cell. This is the cancer cell. Now you use antigens on the cell. You use monoclonal antibodies. You use monoclonal antibody locked into antigen and that's how you can target the drug delivery and that is where uh, and then signaling uh, attracts these molecules antibody and antigen combination and then take it to the it's a very new technology which is there using it and then they use multiple types of combinatorial therapy there 
and this is where you have combinations of therapy available. So monoclonal antibody cancer therapy that what uh, block HER protein. So HER proteins are one of the reason for cancer. So there are they are created monoclonal antibody cancer therapy which will block HER protein and reduce the cancer growth. Then there are HER blocking monoclonal antibody therapies for useful. Sometimes they are only weakly effective or may not work at all in certain patients. So they don't know exactly. Then there are major problem with cancer therapy based on inhibiting HER pathway is GRB7 another receptor and um, upregulation which promotes the cancer cell survival and migration. Drug inhibition of AKT signaling is the culprit. So now they are learning from system biology that which is the uh, receptor and how you can block that and so there are several combination of transduzumab and lapatinib may help overcoming drug resistance in HER2 positive breast cancer. So you will find for every patient they are learning new things through the system biology and they are coming up with new technologies. So combining MTOR inhibitor, HDSC inhibitor, these are different names of, you know, these are all, you can see here the activating receptors. So each of these receptors, uh, CD28, GX40, GITR, CD137, for each receptor there is a different antibody. So it's very technical thing. So that's why they do MTT test in big uh, many wells they put and they identify which antibody will be attaching this. So every of them they have uh, agonistic antibodies they will try to connect with this receptor and then this is your T cell stimulation. So how you stimulate your T cell to fight the cells is yeah and that's why there is a CAR T cell they call it chimeric antigen uh, response. So this CAR uh, chimeric antigen receptor T cell so CAR T cell is now approved by the FDA. The first CAR T cell uh, immunotherapy is approved by FDA. So this is where how this thing work. And they are still, you know, you have to find out what cell will be uh, affecting or uh, uh, proliferating the T cell so that cancer cell will work. So they are trying to use many different types of approaches for this treatment. So here you will find personalized cancer therapy. So once you learn the patient system biology, now you will understand which are the receptors which are involved and then you start using combinatorial therapy. So there is panitumumab, centuximab, GIV antifibrisate, bevacituzumab. These are all uh, drugs which are used for biotechnology drugs. Now they use whether it is Vajayf A, Vajayf C, Vajayf D, you know, or there is NG2, Vajayf B, PDGF or FGF. So these are all different types of receptors. And there are, so you try to use combination of this with the antibody. Now and target the thing. So angiogenesis, tumor microenvironment, uh, it's very interesting to learn how the tumor microenvironment is around the cancer cell and how you can enter into that tumor microenvironment so that you can either kill the cell or stop deactivate the cell and that is the actual thing which is working there. So there the need for combining cancer therapies addressing multiple pathways is reflected in the large number of clinical trials for such combined therapies. So you know lung cancer, colorectal cancer, these are all different cancers and you cannot put them into one basket and treat them with one drug. That is not happening. Now they, they have learned that that is not the way to do it. So now they don't put them in basket. They are now moving toward precision and personalized medicine. We talked about that. So safety study for LBH 518 by stat and even even Everolimus is stabilized kidney cancer. So now people are saying that rather than if you can stabilize the kidney cancer so it will not grow. So deactivate the cancer cell, then kidney cancer will not grow and then you are safe. So the approaches are different. Now initially you wanted to kill all the cells, cancer cells. Now you say don't kill them, let them deactivate, let them not proliferate. If you don't allow them to proliferate, the cancer will not be detrimental to the patient and that's the approach they are using it. So they have all different types of combinations of drugs which are again in experimental status. They are not approved by the government, uh, FDA. But they are all working on it, they have investigational drug applications. So now they are trying to come up with a precision medicine in cancer treatment. So you have different people 
how their mutation is happening in body so based on the genetic mutation they are now using genetic immunotherapy to the individual person so you have different groups with different mutation and then you have different uh, genetic modifications in the system so now what they do is they take out the blood so suppose i have a cancer then they will take out my blood then they will separate out my stem cells then they will separate out my genes and then those genes they will identify what is causing the cancer then they will, as we talked about Christian medicine that they will de deactivate that particular portion of the gene or amino acid chain and then grow that gene in vivo in vitro and then once you have adequate concentration of gene they will inject back in my blood and then that gene will grow in the body and prevent the growth or proliferation of cancer and that's how for individual every mutation will be different why and why is, why is still not accepted Approved. No, because FDA, you know, FDA cannot approve this thing so immediately because there is a, uh, they have to do a lot of clinical studies. So this is a risky thing. Okay. Yeah. So, you know, these three pictures, you will find that there is a mutation at this junction. In the second person, the mutation is on the other side. Third person, mutation is in the third ring of DNA. So now every person with this mutations will behave differently so you will have different genes. now you can imagine for every patient yeah. FDA approval is not possible so now they are trying to find out personalized medicine and precision medicine FDA is also coming up with different technique to approve this they, they are also learning because it's a learning process for FDA also so everybody is learning so they have combination of many different drugs here I can I don't want to read that but they are all useful in this. So what is happening is from killing the tumor cells with chemotherapy and radiation, we went to understand tumor cells, understand the cancer cells, understand the system bio biology approach, understand the use of genes and how genes are modifying the molecular network and then how the molecular network modifies the cellular network and how it affects the organic network. So we are trying to study at four levels and then come down to a therapy which is used clipping your genes so that rather than killing the cancer cell you want to deactivate the cancer cell you don't want to let them proliferate in the system so that rest of your body is intact and that is a great approach for this and that's why the whole cancer approach has been changed the research if you see the new research papers in cancer nobody talks about cancer in mice and all those things because they are now learning this new whole technology is very different there. So now second thing comes with that how to reduce the cost of uh, medicines and treatment. So the new approach which everybody has agreed to utilize is use of herbal nutraceuticals for value based oncology care to reduce the concentration and many other aspects are there. So we have seen this slide. Uh, Herbal drugs is a, all different kinds of preparations and their World Health Organization has defined that. So we are using herbal uh, compounds and extract. They can be indigenous herbal medicines, herbal medicines in systems, modified herbal medicines, imported uh, products from herbal medicine base. So you have abstracts, uh, extracts out of that. So all these things are uh, commonly used by human beings. But now because of the nanotechnology, we can utilize them for cancer treatments also. And that's why the why nano herbal drugs is nanotechnology, nanoscience widely used, seen as having great potential to bring benefit to many areas of research and application. So you have seen this slide earlier also. Norio Taniguchi was the Japanese scientist who used this nano. And this is your soccer ball, and this is your carbon nanotube, and in between you have this insect and hair, uh, RBCs, your cells, and this is your DNA strand. So you can see how these particles have become smaller, smaller, smaller. And this is where we are using these nanoparticles for the system. We have seen this nano fabrication bottom up and top down. Uh, bottom up is especially all chemical, top down is for cell phone and TV and all those things are there. We learn about nanotechnology because of the new techniques available for nano characterization to so transmission electron microscopy, dynamic scattering. Uh, fluorescence and TEMs, so all these things that really help to 
know more and more about the nanotechnology. We have already seen this slide challenges with herbal medicine, high dose level, characterization, solubility problem, consistency, reproducibility, clinical efficacy, disagreement between the practitioners and patient compliance. So nanotechnology will in help in improving the patient technology. So now we are looking at providing the herbal drug into cancer cells. How it can be done? As a complementary medicine to the thing. So nanotechnology can help in reducing the dose level, providing better stability, ease in formulation condition, better patient acceptability and it will help in reproducibility of the therapeutic effectiveness. So you will find that there are several clinical trials which are being conducted and they are finding it very positive results is on St. John Watt. Uh, they are using for peptic ulcer and chronic gastritis, Ginkgo biloba. They are using for peripheral artery, uh, arterial insufficiency, renowned disease and dementia and neuropsychiatric features. Ginger is used for pregnancy induced nausea, osteoarthritis. Ginseng is used for reduces postprandial uh, glycemia, improve cancer related fatigue. So now ginseng is widely used by cancer patients uh, post uh, treatment. Curcumin is used in healing peptic cancer ulcer. Echinacea is used for common cold. Chamamul is used for generalized anxiety disorders. Kava is used for anxiolytic and antidepressant. So these are some of the herbal drugs which are widely used for different applications and now they are seeing their use in the cancer treatment. And they use liposome, polymeric micelle, dendrimer, polymeric nanoparticles, solid lipid nanoparticles to incorporate the herbal drugs. And various different types of nanomaterials are used like phosphatidyl cooling, phosphatidyl glycerol, phosphatidyl serine. So different types of, they are, you know, chitosan, alginates, albumin, these are natural gelatin. So you can make nanoparticles, different types of nanoparticles with these materials and incorporate the herbal drugs or extracts out of that. So here is uh, some of the natural are gelatin, albumin, alginate, collagen, chitosan. These are commonly used uh, thing, uh, synthetic materials, metallic iron. Gold nanoparticles is used at therodiagnostics. So they can attach some therapeutic material to the gold nanoparticles and they get into your body cancer. You can target it. And now a lot of researches have been done. You will see many papers on the gold nanoparticle there. So this is how these nanoparticles can have fluorescent probe, targeting moiety, payload, receptor targeting, reticulo, radionuclide, antibodies, shell, imaging agents. So this nanoparticle can have so many attachments, multifunctional nanomaterial they call it. And that can be very useful for this thing. So now you have different technologies of preparing sonication, electroformation, extrusion, high shear homogenization for liposomes to all polymeric nanoparticles or different ways of making nanoparticles using herbal drugs. And the chemical structures of herbal compounds like curcumin, lycopene, tetraandrine, uh, tansinone, stilbilin, uh, silibinin. So these are some of the herbal drugs which are widely used. Uh, and you will find that this is the uh, name of the herb. They are used using liposome, nanoparticles, cytosan nanoparticles. And then they have different types of characteristics, 30 to 50 nanometers. And they have high upload, drug upload. Nanoparticles seem to have suggested to be applied to overcome other water soluble, poorly water soluble herbal medicines and furthermore decrease the treatment of dosage. CS compound, UG hialo, this is typical Chinese medicine and it is used for pneumococcus and beta hemolytic streptococcus infection. High pressure homogenization there, nano precipitation. So you have different types of herbal drugs which are incorporated and seeing their applications in the system. Now there are some interesting developments in cancer treatment using different therapies. So they want to treat the cancer patient with not only drugs and the immunotherapy but also some other aspect which will reduce their pain, reduce their challenges and those are pulse electromagnetic fields. This is one area they are using oxygen and ozone therapy, ultraviolet blood irradiation, oxygen therapy, cold laser therapy, beamer therapy, hypothermia, whole body local, ARP wave theory, hollow biophotonic therapy, liver flush, dose chemo, low dose chemotherapy, 
So this is where what they want is bryo strategy for cancer treatment is when possible mitigate the pain without prescription medicine. So you use this to reduce the pain post treatment. Provide proper after clinic assistance, detoxify the body, restore the body natural immune response and eliminate the tumors. So these are now these are very low cost treatment options and that's how you are reducing the cancer uh, treatment option. Now there are interesting development in cancer treatment is lymphatic therapy where they are using very specialized massage where they do lymphatic massage they call it lymphatic massage and that massage will activate the lymphatic system so they have very interesting uh, they are developing that and more and more uh, people are learning that so Herculeus multi laser therapy curcumin therapy IPT mind body spirit matrix now most of the big hospitals in America have this mind body spirit meditation so if you have a cancer patient then somebody expert of that will come and treat you for half an hour in the evening will teach you how to live happily mind body and spirit and that is helping the patient to be mindfully health, healthy and that is where now this is a new approach they are taking because they are understanding that cancer patient today tomorrow everybody is going to die but if you want to die happily or you want to die with gloomy face, with choice. So they are treating person to learn to live day by day. And every day, good day. And that is how that mind, body, spirit meditation is a part of well-being. For the And there are uh, wellness uh, medical treatments where they really treat the mind, body. And there are a lot of spiritual training also they give it. And all religions are now working on that spiritual training. Poly MBA, Healy, 25 plus IV therapy, frequency therapy, prescription, supplemental therapy, lymphatic therapy. So a lymphatic massage to reduce breast lymphedema and swelling. This is what post uh, cancer treatment they use that uh, to treat the women with breast cancer. Now there is another thing which people are trying to do is lifestyle change. Good food, good nutritional food. So they have ultrasound screen, acupuncture, massage therapy, cupping, nebulizer, curcumin therapy, prolotherapy, laser therapy, nutrition therapy and lab, oncology massage. So in Moffitt Cancer Research, there are massage therapists who are trained for oncology massage. So what happens is if you do the surgery, then you need a different types of massage. And that is where they, they call it oncology massage. It's a specialized massage which they have developed several times. So nano drug delay system entrapping natural bioactive compounds for cancer recent progress. So there are they are using many different types of nanoparticles, nano medicine for treating. So you have complementary traditional Chinese medicine therapy prolonging the lifespan, reducing side effects of chemotherapy, improving life quality, improving body condition and resistance, supporting chemotherapy and reducing inflammation. And for this purpose, they are using complementary traditional Chinese medicine. And they use deliver the traditional Chinese medicine into nanoparticles, and that is where it is a very good. They are working out with this. Uh, this is a very nice uh, review, which was recently published. Is nano drug delay system entrapping natural bioactive compound for cancer recent progress and future challenges, uh, frontiers of oncology, which was published in 2022. So there was a lot of good information about it. Ayurveda is also practiced in many cancer hospitals. What they are trying to do is uh, Dhata Vagni, Chikitsa. So there are different types of Chikitsa treatments in Ayurveda. So they are trying to utilize that. And then Ayurveda has got another Ayurveda, they call it Manas Ayurveda, which is mind treatment. And they are trying to adopt some of these techniques of Ayurveda into uh, well-being of the cancer patient. And it is very interesting. So nano drug delivery platforms, which are, this is your herbal drug. It can be in nano emulsion, magnetic nanoparticles, inorganic nanoparticle, lipid nanoparticle, dendrimers, nanospheres, nanocapsules, lipodome, polymeric missiles, polymeric nanoparticle, carbon nanotubes, gold nanorod. So these are the, so many options are there where you can put your herbal drugs or traditional Chinese medicine and try to complement the medicine uh, treatment with the cancer and reduce the uh, cost of that is why it is value based redu reduction of cost. So now they have given a lot of US patents are uh, permitted given. So you have a you, you, this is the US patent number. It is lung cancer treatment using astragalus cisplatin and vinorebilin. These are astragalus is a natural product. 
cisplatin is anti cancer drug and this vinorelbin is an, so combination of herbal drug and anti cancer drug they gave the treatment this is a patented combination and they are used for lung cancer and non small cell carcinoma astragalus cisplatin and vino reblin is are the compounds then you have novel herbal composition for anti cancer activity which contains cinnamonium jhelicanium uh, jepresi this invention relate to the herbal composition of cancer treatment where cinnamon is used it, it's cinnamon is used which you, we, you get it in starbucks also but that is used so it is used for different cancer treatment then there is a patent given to study provides a novel insight into mechanism of action of quercetin induced apoptosis in human breast cancer cell and it is used for human breast cancer quercetin is a natural product then you have brassica oilaceae ha which is a natural product it is cytotoxic herbal silver nanoparticles as a remedy for mammary carcinoma and it is used for mammary carcinoma cervical cancer and hepato carcinoma so there are several patents like there is curcumin and its analog used for pancreatic cancer then you have curcumin used for glioblastoma the brain cancer curcumin and resveratrol resveratrol is a antioxidant natural antioxidant in uh, your oh boy it it is in red wine also resveratrol but grape grape wine it carries resveratrol and then also is uh, berries they call resveratrol it's a natural very good antioxidant um, so honokiol and maganolol these are all anti uh, oxidant they are all brought together in a patent and that is used for brain cancer liver cancer skin cancer curcumin resveratrol honokiol again brain cancer liver cancer but they different formulation is there then you have curcumin sophoro phospholipid complex with curcumin is there natural specifically for breast cancer curcumin glioblastoma in a different combination using liposome curcumin resveratrol in a different combination of polymeric missiles used for brain cancer again curcumin so you will find that curcuma is patented in many many different patents and you have several of them genistein is another natural product genistein like species which having hydroxyl group and thiol group prostate cancer so you have so many patents are given now for herbal drug and for cancer treatment and that is now reducing the cost of the treatment so nano based value care will provide you to reduction of cost in the oncology prospect so we have to look at health of individual with cancer so we have to look at mental well being cancer symptomology and this this uh, this utility of its treatment social well being integrated cancer care spiritual well being affordability of cancer care physical well being access to the cancer care so these are all model which are used by many different and they are using lot of phytochemicals in the study so value based care framework projects city of hope in you have evidence based care you have care management and you have care after the cancer and in care after the cancer you use all these alternative system so that you can reduce the cost of the treatment natural products are key source for development of innovative anti cancer medicine that may be used both preventively and therapeutically and this is how they are using herbal drugs for the so there is a lot to learn in this area lot to be done in this area and people are working more and more mm -hmm. to learn that so i already showed it so i won't waste your time in our college information these are my books and much of that yes gracias yeah i have a couple of questions yeah yeah go ahead uh, you said that i will drink some water in the middle yeah. <laughs> the uh, some of the treatment uses in uh, nanoparticle metal nanoparticles like road and particle no uh, nano roads yeah. nano chips Uh, we are using these kind of nanoparticles um, uh, to hyperthermia treatment. So, uh, in the in the radiation based treatment, they can use less radiation um, because uh, they use the nanoparticles to heat the tumor. Yeah, yeah. There is any other way to use metal nanoparticles? You know, metal nanoparticle. nanoparticle. They are using it because. if you use a electron magnetic field you can vibrate the nanoparticles and that vibration can create either release the drug one possibility uh -huh. or 
possibility of creating the vibration which can kill the cancer cells. So that is electromagnetic field and how the nanoparticles, you know nanoparticles behave very differently than the nano, normal particles because they are already in a quantum moment yeah. because of their sheer particle size. So obviously how you control that is one thing, we, we physics people can really do a lot of research in this area because uh, if suppose you put a drug on the nanoparticle, gold nanoparticle, how it can be released through external sources because otherwise you coat it with polymer and then put it inside. So there are ways to activate the metallic nanoparticles through some external sources, whether that is possible or not. That is, a lot of people are looking at that. And that is a physics problem basically, because it is a physical chemical property of metal and magnet, and how they can interact with each other. So that is where one thing comes into. Second challenge which is, is agglomeration of the nanoparticles. So normally what they do is they add a charge the nanoparticle mm -hmm. and the charge will repel each other yes. and that's why they will not agglomerate mm -hmm. but at the nano level in the micro level it works very well but in the nano level it doesn't work that much so the agglomeration happens so there is a how to prevent that agglomeration in the nanoparticles is another big challenge because the when it is micro particles data potential helps you know, if you have negative potential on the particle, then they will not agglomerate. So that is another area which is a lot of research is needed in that. People are doing it, people are learning about yeah. that, yeah. Uh, second is, uh, would you say that the, this therapy is based on radiation will disappear a long time? Yeah, no, yeah. it will come. I think uh, you want the therapy application of this take long time? No. Yeah, it maybe in 10, 20 years, we no, will no, not no. I don't think it will be that long. Radiation for treatment. No, it will come much earlier than that. Really? Yeah, yeah. Because the reason is, the cost is much less. So people will try to create the, you know, it's like blood donation. Mm -hmm. In good old days, blood donation was a very specific thing. So you will not donate blood everywhere. But then they came up with kits, correct? Mm -hmm. So now you can do blood donation in your campus <laughs> because the kits have been done. So a day will come that you, there will be machines which will be developed in coming few years where you take the blood of the cancer patient, the machine will separate stem cells, machine will separate genes and then machine will do the rest of the things and you, they can inject it, so it will be one day program. Nice. Once those machines come, in the beginning the machines will be expensive, but over the period of time multiply it, so it will, so we are, there are, they have developed very good machines nowadays for genetic studies and good number of hospitals are having those studies. So uh, people, as I mentioned in Thailand, like they have a hospital, big hospital, and they have one full sec section for genomic study. So nowadays, a lot of doctors send the blood sample to the genomic labs, get all the information, genetic information, and decide how to deal with it. Now the same machines are multiplying. So it will be a matter of time. Like in 10 years time, the TV prices went down like anything. Same thing with iPhones. Same thing will be with all these machines, genetic characterization machines. They will go down very quickly and they will come like handy. So you can take it to rural areas also. Mm. It's like blood pressure or yeah. ECG. Mm. ECG initially used to be big machine. Now ECG you carry it with you because the machines have been small and nanotechnology helps in that. So that will be very easy. Only thing is training of the physicians. Because what happens is, even though the science is here, the medical colleges are here. So the developed science has to go to the medical college to educate the medicine doctors to utilize that. So for that purpose, there is a need for training of the doctors. Now the hurdle is faculty. 
because I am a faculty, correct? I have prepared my slides in 1940. I don't want to change my slides. So I keep on <laughs> teaching the same things. So if the faculty is good, then they will every time, like, I, I don't say that I am a good faculty, but if you see my presentations every year, I always add the new things into it. Every time I modify my presentations, every year I will spend time to make sure that the new things are introduced. Because the student has to learn the new things. As I, if you remember, I have mentioned that the student today is going to be in profession for 50 plus years. Mm -hmm. So if I tell them all the old things, they are already obsolete. So I need, if I tell them new things, then they are at least competitive. So the faculty has to be educated in how to perform, how to give the updated knowledge. Because there are certain faculties, they are dedicated teachers. Those who are dedicated teachers, they will improve every day. They will learn for themselves. But there are certain people who do for, who work for sake of working, not for the pleasure. No. Then there is a problem. So it depends on what, so there are many colleges, like in our college, we change our curriculum every five years. Because Mm. Every five, five years, science is changing. Yeah. So you have to do that. If you don't do that, then there is a challenge. Sir, they're turning the chat. children. Now you can look at it. I don't know how. Teachers. Have the question. There are three questions. Oh, sorry, they need need to change. Okay, so okay, so good low income people have access to this technology for early cancer detection and treatment. Early cancer detection is uh, available like mammograms, you can do that easily. Um, in, in this hospital, they work it. The prostate cancer testing is available, but treatment is questionable because not all the treatments are transferred from the lab to the bedside. And that is where the challenge is. But I think, as I mentioned in my previous answer, that it's a matter of five to 10 years to get smaller and smaller equipment, which can do all the detection and treatment pattern. So, uh, early cancer detection is possible if the patient is proactive. Rather than thinking that I will get the cancer and do early detection, if you try to go to the hospital and talk to the doctor that I'm, I want to do this, then your awareness is grown. And that is what is needed for early detection. Sorry. Bless you. Yeah, thank you very much. <laughs> so, early detection is the best preventive policy. So women, as soon as they reach 40 years old, try to do mammograms. Men, remain 40 years old, try to do colonoscopy. At least every 5 years or 10 years, try to do prostate testing at every year. So this way, you will be able to detect. And in the early phase detection, it is easy to treat the cancer and you have a little longer life. If you don't do that, then you will have challenges with that. But the treatment which we are talking about today, nanomedicine treatments are, many of them are in phase, clinical phase trials. So once they are approved, then gradually as I mentioned that the medical colleges will have to be training their medical graduates to use this. And that is where the big hurdle is there that if the medical colleges have ability facility to educate, then the people will get it. If the medical colleges are not interested in this, then they will not be able to. Because this is a money. So there are, I have seen, there are many private medical colleges. They are just money making medical colleges. They don't do much. So those people are useless to the society. They just make the money. But there are certain colleges or certain faculty who would like to 
put their efforts to make sure that it happens. And I am sure it will happen. Cancer spreads with stress and may not be necessarily hereditary. It is, there is still a lot of research has to be done because they have a lot of papers which show that certain cancers are genetically transferred, so hereditary. So you have certain chronic diseases, I will say, because cancer is a chronic disease. So diabetes is hereditary, now it is confirmed, most of the people know it. Uh, cancer also in certain cases like for breast cancer, there is a lot of evidence that it is a hereditary disease. For prostate cancer, there is a evidence publication that says it is a hereditary disease. So depending on what kind of genes are involved in causing the cancer, probably we will be able to learn more and more about uh, the genes responsible for cancer and whether they come from which parent or grandparent because normally it is three generations which are responsible for the genetic structure and that will help us to uh, understand stress is always if you have stress stress directly is related to the amount of ROS the higher stress you have the more reactive oxygen species are built in the body the more reactive oxygen species are built in the body the more inflammatory responses are there in the body and cancer itself becomes an inflammatory response so stress is related to well-being of the human being if you can learn to live with less stress your lifestyle is good you will be better off for any disease doesn't matter which is cancer or not cancer or anything so we have to learn how to live without the stress and that is the technology where this yoga meditation spiritual practices breathing exercises lifestyle changes all these things help you if you are looking at i'll tell you a very simple example in america we are facing this major problem because most of the youths do not sleep till three o'clock in the morning and then they come rushing into the classrooms they have so much stress because of this so now you if you change your lifestyle and you start sleeping at 10 o'clock you'll have less stress but the technology is such that you want to talk to people on mm. facebook it is easy to communicate so this is where you are creating your own challenges and you are creating your own problems solution is in your hands whether you want to live uh, keep awake yourself till 3 a.m 4 a.m in the morning and rush to the classes at 8 a.m or you sleep at 10 a.m and come to the get up at 6 or 6 a.m and go to the class at 8 a.m Cho choice is yours and those people when you are young you will never understand how it is going to affect you but by the time this generation will come at 40 45 probably we may see the effect of all these gadgets uh, on our generations because today we don't know after 10 years we will need i have several friends who got uh, using the cell phone for longer hours 10 hours 12 hours in a day they started getting earache and now they are saying that use of uh, this cell phone may cause you the ear cancers which is a new thing now so you always keep cell phone like this and then talk like this so that it will not be very close to your ears because the waves go continuously in your ear mm -hmm. and it will cause so then people use the earphones but earphones also transfer the wave yeah. so obviously best way is to keep on but then if you have private talking then you cannot use the speaker <laughs> <laughs> so there are challenges but one thing is very clear that adopting the technology and minimizing the use of technology might help us to be with a better lifestyle and that is what is and there is one more question so what are the most efficient and least toxic types of particles for cancer treatment in your laboratory what type of you know what we are doing is in our laboratory we use only fda approved polymers so pcl plga P peg um, so these are some of the polymers which are FDA approved, they are biocompatible. Another polymer group which is natural polymer group like cytosan, gelatin, albumin, these are uh, part of our body system. So you can utilize those and they are better materials to create nanoparticles for the treatment.
Okay, thank you very much, very much. So, any other question? I don't think. No? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, no. Yeah. No. yeah. Go ahead. Uh, according to cancer survival rate, uh, you believe the one day um, a cure, a, uh, a cure kinds for my found? Cure. I couldn't get it. Okay. Um, Sorry, la cura del cancer. Ah, yeah. Cancer. If the cancer can be cured, it can be off and forever. Try to understand one basic thing. Cancer exists in everybody's body. So, higher the immunity, you don't see the cancer proliferated. Correct? But you can remove the cancer cells. But then your body will create more cancer cells in due course of time because it is part of the nature. Mutating these cells is part of the nature. So if somebody asks me, can diabetes be completely cured? The answer is no. Because diabetes is a disorder. Diabetes is not a dis disease. Disorder is where your body does not produce enough insulin. That is disorder. Disease is when you have infection and you get some challenges, that is disease, you can cure it. But disorders can be completely cured, question mark. Whether, but what we have seen is that you can prolong the lifespan of the cancer patient. Yeah. So, I, as a scientist, if I personal opinion, not the scientific, I think that it will be cancer is not a curable disease. Cancer is a disease which, a disorder which remains in your body. Your cells have ability to continuously mutate. And that's why you will not be able to completely remove the cancer for the body for rest of your life. It will appear later. But in the meantime, after the cancer treatment, if you keep on building up your immunity so that you will be a healthy person, probably you will survive longer. But until now, I have seen a lot of cases where with all the treatments and everything, cancer relapses. 5 years, 10 years, 20 years, it comes back. Because your immunity cannot remain same today, tomorrow, day after tomorrow. Because if suppose you get a viral infection, your immunity will go down. Cancer cell will go up. Suppose you eat something which has high insecticide content for one year, the rice or anything, then automatically your insect uh, immunity is going down. Suppose suddenly you have a lot of stress. If you have a lot of stress, immunity goes down, cancer will go up. So cancer is part of the body, but building up immunity will help us to reduce that. And prolong it. Everybody is to die, correct? So when you die, you don't know. The death time is fixed. <laughs> so if suppose I am supposed to be dying at the age of 20, 85, then I will remain healthy. No, no problem, nothing, anything. I will give you everything. Just it has happened on my, I just got the news from my, the person who was senior to me by two years. He was also PhD in pharmacy. He just fell down day before yesterday and died today. He was very healthy, walking around, everything was good, but failed in the bathroom and died today. So, there was a lot of rest in peace, rest in peace, all the things are there. So, one of the person asked a question, what was the reason he died? <laughs> so, you know, I, I wrote, death is normal, it was in time came, so he died, why you worry about the reason? Because failing down doesn't make reason to die, correct? But if time came, so he died. <laughs> so, once you know that you are going to die, then don't take stress about death. Take it a normal process. You know, normal processes, 
it becomes night correct when it is night the dawn is going to come normal process if you are tired you are going to sleep normal process <laughs> if your time comes you are going to die normal process then no stress that the best way to <laughs> think about it i don't know not scientific more on the spiritual side Okay, thank you. Gracias, muchas. Much. Enjoy talking all the uh, questions. Very nice question. Any more, more questions? So yeah. Let's see. No, no. Questions. Gracias, muchas, to everybody online. Let's tomorrow say, is my last class. Yeah, yeah. yeah tomorrow is last class. So let's uh, thanks. And uh, the workshop Roberto will be again. over. Thank you very much. See you tomorrow. In this, let's see. I'm doing. Yeah. Bueno, muchas gracias a todos.